about mass deliverance. Mass, mass, mass deliverance where whole groups, I'm prophesying it, whole groups of society are going to be delivered by the fire of God. Whole groups of society are going to be set free and delivered and it's going to release a massive harvest and the church has to be ready for it. And then we're in Ohio and again in the meeting, wave after wave after wave of this incense burning this fire is coming again and i'm like by the third time i'm like god i need you to talk to me you're trying to tell me something god and in that first meeting in london during the worship i had a vision and in my vision i see this angelic being standing up near me in the front over here to my right and he, his hand is open like this and he's holding like a sensor in his hand and from it is coming up this burning incense so i'm seeing this angelic being i'm seeing from his hand burning incense coming up and i'm smelling it and i'm seeing in the spirit something that is connected to this fragrance that's showing up in the room so then i go over to the book of revelation and i read in revelation chapter 8 verse 3 and I read this, and it says, another angel came and stood over the altar. Remember I said before about the altar and the well. Pitch your tent between the altar and the well. It says, then he stood there over the altar, and he had a golden censer, and he was given very much incense, which exhaled perfume when burned, that he might mingle it with the prayers of the saints. Because in Revelation chapter 5, verse 8 through 10, it talks about the prayers of the saints rising as incense. So incense also refers to the prayers of the saints. But here is incense coming from the hand of the angel mixing in with the prayers of the saints. Upon the golden altar before the throne, the smoke of the incense arose in the presence of God with the prayers of the people of God from the hand of the angel. So the angel took the censer, now filled it with fire from the altar and cast it down to the earth. took fire from the altar of heaven and released it down to the earth. When the incense of the angel mixed with the incense of the prayers of the people, fire was released. Now I'm telling you guys, get ready for a fresh baptism of the fire of God. Get ready for a fresh baptism of the fire of God. There is a fresh fire coming upon the church. A fresh baptism of fire. Oh, hallelujah. And with it is coming a new move of prayer and intercession. Because every move of God is preceded by supernatural intercession. Now, I started to process all this, so of course I'm calling my friends and I'm asking them, what do you think about this, what do you think about that, what are you seeing, what's God saying to you? And I want to tell you a few things because it's pretty cool what God is doing, all right? So now, Patricia King writes me, and she says this, Matt, this is awesome. I've been crying out for there to be a perpetual fire on the altar of prayer, a return of the priesthood, intercession for the nations, and for the lost. So she starts talking about this fire on the altar, a fire that does not go out, that is an intercession for the lost, for the lost. Everyone say the lost. Okay, so then Sean Boltz, writes me and he says this he says my frame of reference for incense angels would be that incense angels come before the next great outpouring and release what end time intercession and godly sorrow for souls like a homesickness for people who belong to him so that we would fall in love with them a homesickness for the lost that we would fall in love with them and it would bring an intercession for the lost and for souls and their incense angels released before the last great harvest. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> and then, and then Cindy Jacobs writes me and she says, this is powerful. I've been talking and preaching about a baptism of fire and the crucible of God. So she's been preaching on the baptism of fire. And then Joshua Mills 
says to me, he says, Matt, it's a glory sign. He says, angels holding a golden censer, and it's a call to holiness, a return to purity. A return to purity. Oh, hallelujah. God is calling his people back to himself, holiness unto the Lord. So then Bonnie Shavda writes me, and she says, we've had two watches in the last few months where there was smoke and fire smell. She said, I had this happen in Virginia last night. Barbara Yoder just had two totally new level meetings, starting with her conference called Strike the Match. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I believe it's from heaven, the heaven realm, into which we are, in, into where we are. Uh, I've been having glimpses of a fiery coal in my hand, as in Isaiah 6. There is lots to be considered and said about all of this, a potential implication of Jesus himself drawing us into a fiery literal presence of Hebrews 12 and Isaiah 4. Meditate on Isaiah chapter 6 of the coal of fire. Oh, hallelujah. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. And uh, what I sense is with this new baptism of fire, a new movement of intercession for the harvest of souls. And with this, and what I've really been sensing is a call of the Holy Spirit back to the secret place. Because I'm going to tell you what happens in the secret place, you are prepared for your next season in the secret place. And there is a re-preparation happening right now. A re-preparation. And what I mean is this. You may have experienced God in many different capacities up till this point. But what's coming, it's important that we allow God to prepare us for what's ahead. That preparation happens in the secret place. And what I've sensed is no striving, no striving in the secret place, but a being with God. And as you just spend time with him, he is going to prepare your spirit and get you ready. So you are right in the middle of what he's doing. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Matthew 6, 6, about the secret place, it says, go to your father, shut the door. And when you pray to him in secret, he'll reward you openly. I've discovered something about the secret place. The secret place is a place where you are where no one sees, no one knows, no one knows the time you spend with God, no one knows your private walk with God, but what you sow in secret ultimately becomes your public harvest. Amen. And when you sow in the secret place, in private, there will be a public overflow of the glory and anointing of God on your life. Come on now. This is where it overflows from. This is where it comes from. It comes from the secret place of being with him, with God. And in this place, there's a preparation that, that is happening. And what I really sense is even in Joshua, I believe it's chapter 3 where God says to Joshua, or the Joshua says to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Even there you see the preparation. Never despise times of preparation in your life. I'm going to say it again. Never despise seasons of preparation. If you are right now not in the full manifestation of your destiny and call, don't despise that time because what that means is if you're not in the 100% fulfillment of it, that means you are in the process of being prepared for it, which is just as vital as seeing it fulfilled. Because if you're not prepared for it, you won't be able to stay and hold it once God gives it to you. You want, you want to have deep roots? Come on now. You want to have deep roots planted by a well, so the deeper your roots are, the higher you can grow. Oh, I know, we all want to go high. We all want to go up. We, we want to go to the high voltage power lines. Come on, anyone with me? You want to go to the high voltage power lines? You want to go to the maximum place that you can go to in God? Well, the higher you want to go, that means the deeper your roots have to go. That means in the secret place, guess what God will do? God will soften and tenderize your heart 
to bring you into a place of consecration before him where you are set apart and separate for his purpose and for his plan in your life consecrated set apart for a for a holy purpose and a holy call oh hallelujah you are you are anointed to be consecrated you're anointed not just to display power but you are anointed to be consecrated to god to be separated unto him with fire on the altar on the altar of your heart the altar of your life the altar of your family the altar in your home the altar in your church fire on the altar setting apart oh hallelujah and with this setting apart you know what's going to happen i'm going to tell you what's going to happen the more consecrated the church becomes in the place of god's presence in the secret place i'm not talking about religious works i'm talking about holy consecration by the holy spirit that comes from union with god it comes from being with god you become like him you know what's going to happen out of that place the fire of God is going to disintegrate everything the enemy tries to bind you up with. That's what happens. You wait before him and the fire of God fills your soul, the fire of God fills your mind, the fire of God fills your flesh, and everything the enemy tries to entangle you with, it burns up. The stuff that tries to entangle you, the stuff that tries to get on you, it burns up by the fire of God. And you see, the more that stuff gets burned up, the more free you are, the more free you are, the more authority you have, the more power you have. That when you speak a word, all of heaven moves with it. Like when Jesus spoke freedom over that man with legion, in the same hour, he was completely healed and in his sound mind. Heaven backed that word and brought healing and transformation. You see, and this is what God's going to do. God is releasing a fire that will ultimately lead to mass movements of deliverance. I'm talking about mass deliverance. Mass, mass, mass deliverance where whole groups, I'm prophesying it, whole groups of society are going to be delivered by the fire of God. Whole groups of society are going to be set free and delivered and it's going to release a massive harvest and the church has to be ready for it be ready for it. mass moves of deliverance but you see that fire is going to move in us that fire is going to burn in us that fire is going to set us apart going to consecrate us but it's also going to be the fire of his unconditional love the fire of his heart the, just the fire of everything that is in god it's going to burn in us, and it's going to bring breakthrough. You're going to be like a walking, living flame. You're going to be like a walking flame of fire that everywhere you go, breakthrough is going to happen. Everywhere, you're going to be a walking breakthrough. Everywhere you go, people are going to, people are going to get saved. People are going to get healed. People are going to get delivered. They're just going to get delivered because the fire of God that is abiding on you and in you. Thank you so much for listening to today's message. As the word has blessed you, I'm going to ask you to partner with the anointing on this ministry. Your partnership will help us reach more lives for Jesus. We love our partners and pray daily for you. As a partner, you will receive an exclusive online library of Matt's monthly partner teachings. To partner, visit mattsorger.com. You can also download Matt's app to get free webinars, live stream access, episodes of Matt's TV show, Unstoppable God, a free audio Bible, and more. Just search for Matt Sorger Ministries in your app store. For great teaching resources, visit mattsorger.com. And to join Matt's mentoring community, go to mattsorgermentoring.com. Go and be a blessing today and touch someone's life with God's love.